Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have some examples of some bridge trusses. Here's what we call the Pratt, the Howe, and the Warren. You may recognize the names Pratt and Howe from the, bridge, uh, from the roof trusses that we showed in the previous video. If you take a look at those and you take a look at these right here, you notice that the Pratt and the Howe are really what we call roof trusses almost upside down. Take a look and you'll see what we mean by that. The whole idea with bridge trusses is that you're supposed to be able to hold very heavy loads. Let's say a big locomotive tries to cross the bridge here. There's going to be a lot of weight pushing down on these bottom uh, members. And somehow you need to support that weight and carry that force out, out to the supports on the very edge. And that's done through the structure of beams and, and joints. It may not be apparent in each case when you look at it, which of the beams is under compression and which of those beams is under uh, tension. And the reason, for, the way we, we figure that out is when we go very systematically from one side of the bridge to the other side through the truss, one joint, one member at a time, and you'll see how that technique is done, which eventually you can figure out. Notice that the wheels here of this locomotive are not pushing down on any one of the joints where the strength of the truss is. So we usually have what we call some stringers or joists that run across that are connected to the particular joints so that the weight of the wheels or the weight of the load can be carried to the joints that where it needs to be because the beams themselves on the on these truss do not have the strength required to hold heavy loads like that. You can see that the weight here would cause this particular member to be under tension pulling down from there but that is being upheld by the two diagonal ones that are going here pushing back those would be under compression and you can see that we can work our way through the the truss like that. The hub is constructed a little bit different. Notice a big load here would be pulling on the beam here and would be pulling on the joint there and that strength would then be supported by the two coming in this direction which would be hanging from these right here and that would be connect that would then be supported by those hanging this way and then supported there. So you can see that the strength of the truss is, is uh, gained by being able to transfer the load out to the eventual supports on either side of the truss. The one is a little bit different. You can see here that it may be not quite apparent which of these beams are under compression, under, under tension, but as we develop our techniques, you'll see that it will, will not be that hard to figure that out. So here's some nice examples, some bridge trusses. We'll show you some other structures, what they look like, and then we'll dive right into the technique of how to actually calculate all the various forces on each of the beams and each of the joints, because that's really what it's all about.